So what are some adaptations that you can make, maybe specifically within school systems um, that can help to be more efficient and effective with your supervision? So the first one I would say is to maximize the group supervision. You can have up to two group supervision sessions per month. Well, I suppose you could have more so long as it's 50% of, uh, no more than 50% of their supervision um, is uh, individual hours, right? So we do two group supervisions per month. Um, that means that when we were looking at how many hours, six and a half hours that I would need to supervise a trainee if they were earning 130 hours per month, I can cut that in half um, for uh, most of my, roughly in half if I have group supervision because I can combine all of my group supervision uh, all of my trainees into the same group supervision session, and then I only have to do individual supervisions for the other ones. Not sure if I'm explaining this well. <laughs> Instead of having to meet um, every trainee four times a month, I can have two group supervision sessions, and then I only need to meet my trainees two times individually each month. So you can cut down on your hours. The group supervision also allows you the opportunity to do some of that behavioral skills training for specific skills in that group context where everybody gets the training at the same time. And then in your individual supervision sessions, you can do that ongoing um, progress. And that's basically how we structure it. We have group supervision, which introduces a topic or a concept. We discuss that. We maybe role play it a little bit if possible. And we provide an assignment for them to work on. In their individual supervision session, we then review that assignment. So if it is a written assignment, we're providing feedback on the written assignment. If it's a video assignment where they have to go and get a video clip of them, you know, uh, conducting a functional assessment interview, then we watch that video clip together and we, um, and we provide feedback on that, which kind of then leads into this uh, other adaptation, asynchronous video observations. Those are allowed. Now, you don't want to um, let's see, the way they phrase it is preferred that you are able to do live synchronous observations. However, asynchronous video observation is possible. So if you're not able to be there in the classroom or at the school when they are performing those skills, if they are able to and have all the permissions to videotape themselves performing the skills, you guys could watch it later. Um, we like to do, when we have videos, we watch those together during the individual supervision sessions so that we can pause the video, we can provide that feedback as we're looking at it. It would be possible to watch the video separately as a supervisor and then meet and provide feedback or provide written feedback, but I don't think that that's the most effective method. I found that watching the videos together is the most effective method. So we might be meeting at 6 p.m. every evening. Well, there's not learners that my trainee is serving at 6 p.m., but they have videotapes from sessions they did earlier that week. So we watch those together. Um, other adaptations, making the current work that the trainee is doing more behavior analytic. So your trainee, may not already be engaged in stuff that just screams behavior analysis. That's okay. Behavior analysis and the science of behavior is about understanding how and why organisms learn and how they behave. So especially in the school setting, there are tons of opportunities because that's the point of the school is to teach uh, children um, how to learn and what to learn. So you might have um, opportunities to take regular data where maybe that's not a job requirement that they take that much data, but 
having more data probably isn't going to hurt anything. Um, you can have them write operational definitions. So when they say, well, this learner is engaging in blah, great, have them practice writing these operational definitions. Oh, well, I want to teach this learner this skill set. Great, have them write an operational definition for that. Um, they might be able to do those two things from the very beginning, regardless of what their current duties are. And then you can start to incorporate more and more uh, behavior analytic tasks within their job duties. Um, you can start to use more behavior analytic terminology. So they are um, talking about um, a behavior intervention plan, but they're starting to use some more behavior analytic terminology, or they're starting to introduce that, um, or at least be able to translate what they're doing in the, the school education uh, terminology back to behavior analytic terminology. Um, they might be able to start incorporating more reinforcement systems. And then, like I said, as their behavior analytic skill set continues to grow, you will be able to find opportunities for them to implement those specific behavior intervention strategies to teach specific skills. Good teaching uses the principles of behavior analysis. So anywhere that teaching is occurring, learning is occurring, you have the opportunity to um, make that more behavior analytic or help to identify and connect the pieces between what someone might have learned from an education perspective and how that relates to the behavior analytic perspective and where those overlap. Um, also for adaptations, you may need to supplement. Um, you might need to find videos and have them practice taking fidelity and IOA data on videos that you find. You might need to analyze graphs that come from other clients with all the appropriate permissions or everything redacted, right? But you might need to pull in other information. Um, your trainee may need to find volunteer opportunities outside of maybe their current work environment. This is not uncommon for our trainees. They may have a specific role and they may be able to collect a good portion of their hours through their work. However, there might be certain experiences that they are not going to get in that opportunity. Um, we try our best to help either create those opportunities. Um, like uh, this past summer, we actually um, took on a family that we supported and provided uh, uh, in-home ABA services um, staffed with trainees for a two month period in the summer as an opportunity for um, the trainees to practice and um, and at no cost to the family, right? So that was an opportunity that we were able to set up through our program. We might also be able to connect trainees with other agencies or other um, settings that could provide certain opportunities. I've also had um, trainees go out and find additional opportunities of working with maybe a different population or supporting um, individuals through a volunteer opportunity that provides additional opportunities to practice certain skills. 